Yo, what up guys, Sam here, and I thought I would come to you in the Japanese gardens of Brisbane and tell you this one concept that I've been actually implementing in my life, which is this idea of evolution. Now, I'm at a pond where there's a lot of ducks, there's a lot of fish, there's tadpoles, and it's kind of similar to what I'm trying to tell you, the evolution of how when you get into anything, maybe it's you know relating to people, maybe it's success with women, maybe it's anything about improving your social life, at the start, you'll have to do one thing. But also the other concept that we've got to see is what will get us here won't get us to that next step. So you'll find that you're going to get stuck in intermittent purgatory. You're going to get stuck at this middle point where you gained a lot of success at the start. But you hit that middle point and you're like, why can't I keep going? It's like you've got this glass barrier and you're like, I'm actually doing the things that got me success at the start, but why are they not getting me success and why are they not progressing? And it's kind of stagnant. What I'm here to tell you is that what got you to that middle point won't get you to that next point. You have to almost re-evolve yourself. It's kind of like a Pokemon. You go from Charmanda all the way to Charizard. There's a few different things in between that where we're going to go through in which you have to kind of rediscover, re-evolve yourself, re-evolve your beliefs in order to become that person and that lifestyle that you want. So one of the things when you start off in your interactions is that when you're starting, when you're beginning, when you're actually getting acclimatized to talking to different people, when you're getting acclimatized to attracting different people into your life, one of the things that got you from a beginner is that you're jumping into other people's realities. You're having a kind of where you've started from is so maybe low down, maybe it's just you didn't know how to relate with people, maybe it was just you didn't know how to communicate with people. And so the first thing that you get told is you've got to go out, you've got to be proactive, you've got to go talk to people, and you go absolutely do that. And what you're doing is you're jumping into everyone else's reality, which is absolutely fine. In that way, that, that's fine in the terms of that you're actually putting yourself out there, you're actually talking to people, and that's the very first step. If you don't do that first step, then you're not actually gonna know and kind of gain the fundamentals that allow you to progress further along. So the fundamentals are number one. Once you've got the fundamentals, you're having, you're interacting with people, sometimes you get caught up in just being part of their reality. So you'll get to that intermediate purgatory, that medium phase, and you're still doing the things that the start that you did. You're still jumping into people's realities, you're still having fun, you're still interacting, you're still being yourself. But one of the things is that you're seeing other people and you're saying, well, they're not doing what I'm doing. They're, they're doing something else. They're, they're being cool, calm. Why can't I be more like them? And so you start to judge yourself, you start to compare yourself, and you might even try to do what they're doing, but nothing works. Then you go back to your old stuff and then that doesn't work either because it's kind of like the veil's been taken off and you're like, which stuff do I do? Do I do this what I was doing before? Do I do this? Which is totally different than what I'm doing and you start to get wrapped up and that's the second thing that you're going to fall into is you're going to start to compare yourself with a lot of people. What I came to realize is when I started out with attracting different people in my life, I was jumping into their reality. I was being part of their world. I was wanting to do the things that they wanted to do. I was wanting to hang out with them. I was, I was hitting them up constantly and I did that a while and it really successfully worked because it was very congruent to my, to my reality. It's very congruent to who I am but when I got to this intermittent stage, I realized like, okay, well, I'm gonna to have to change everything up. If I wanna attract high level quality people, if I wanna attract different people in my life, there's gonna be a few things that I'm gonna to have to do. And one of the big things was that instead of jumping into people's realities, instead of jumping into their world, instead of being so fixated at me being here and being predicated and kind of judging myself and trying to get them validated and jumping into their reality, I started to pull back and allow people to invest into my reality, a completely different concept. And what it was is that instead of what got me to, you know, success at the start, I kind of had to re-evolve, re-completely transform myself and actually start to do something completely different. Now, when you try anything different, you're gonna see that there's gonna be results here, there's gonna be results there, it's gonna be a little bit all over the place, but you gotta stick with the process. One of Matthew McConaughey's greatest things he said in Green Lights was that when he wanted to get out of the rom-com guy, he was so typecast in the guy that was the romantic comedy dude, he was the main lead, and he wanted to get into more of the serious roles. What he had to do was he said to his wife in the book, if you want to read Green Lights, he said that he's going to have to take some time off. There's going to be no actual roles that he's going to be offered because they're going to keep offering rom-com, 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 and he doesn't want to take that. So it was actually an 18 month period in which he didn't take one move and he knew that this was going to happen. It's kind of similar to you. You're going to find that you're getting all these results with people and then you're going to have to realize that you have to re-evolutionize re the wheel basically. You're going to have to re-evolutionize exactly 
exactly how you communicate. But when you do this, you're gonna set yourself up for a lot more success in the future. What I did was I started to cultivate an environment and an ecosystem in which it allowed me to sit more present in my reality, sit more into what I wanted to do to interact with the people I wanted to do. And it created kind of like a vacuum or a bubble or a gravitational force around me in which people did want to jump into my reality. This is what got me to, from that intermediate, as I said, intermediate purgatory, into more the advanced stuff, into more being able to relate with the highest level people possible in the world. If you do not do this and continuously stick at that, what you did when you were a beginner, when you start to get into higher quality circles, when you get, start to get into high quality parties, when you start to get into high quality people, you're interacting with them, you will notice a few things happening. You will notice that they will feel an incongruency from you. Because again, it's all you really know. This is all you know jumping into other people's realities. It's all you kind of, that's what succeeded. That's what worked. But again, it won't work at the highest level possible. You have to re-evolutionize yourself into having an actual ecosystem around you, having an environment, having a kind of frame of mind, having a belief system that is more centered on you. It's not in a selfish way because at the start, you're gonna be less selfless. You're gonna put yourself out there. You've gotta be proactive, but it's actually balancing this as you get a little bit older of balancing yourself as thinking yourself as high quality. You're entitled to a few things. You have very good self-belief about yourself as well as being a little bit selfless at the same time. You don't want to go, you know, one way you become an entitled prick and you're like, people don't like you. That happens. You don't want to become so selfless in which you will do everything for everyone else and you get labeled that nice guy. So it's always a balance between these two. Now, if you don't know how to balance, you basically know that Everything you do is either going to be perceived one way. It's either going to be perceived as selfless or selfish. It's either two sort of categories you get placed in. All I do is like gently balance these two together. And the reason why I do that is because, you know, I might do something for someone and I know I'm putting emotional sort of money into a bank account with this person. And then sometimes I know that I could be maybe a little bit selfish because I've actually invested in them. You always hear me talk about, you know, the more you give, the more you're going to get in return. But it allows me, hello little one. It allows me to, uh, it's just a duck at the foot having a go, it allows me to be able to have a conversation, be a little bit selfless and give to the other person and you know, actually go into their world a little bit, then it'll be a little bit more selfish and be able to allow them to invest in me. If you don't, what happens is this, if you continue to bombard yourself going to other people's realities, you are not leaving a hole for anyone to invest. You're not leaving that sort of area in which they can actually invest their time and energy. You probably hear the Benjamin Franklin effect, you know, within the, the popular book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, where he says that, how do you get someone to like you more? You get them to do something for you. Now, the popular thing is like, hey, can you go get me a steak? Let's just say that. And they're like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, they go get it. In their head, they're self-rationalizing, saying, I wouldn't do this for anyone that I didn't care about. And so they will actually draw conclusions, being like, I must care about this person. That is the whole Benjamin Franklin effect. If you are allowing them to invest into your reality, you are doing the same thing, the Benjamin Franklin effect. They would say to themselves, I wouldn't be investing into anyone's reality unless I actually cared about them. So you're kind of doing this little mental mind game that is not happening consciously, but subconsciously in this person. So the more time you can do that, a hypothetical example, you're talking to someone and then the conversation kind of goes a little bit dead, right? Instead of you freaking out, trying to fill the space, you kind of create a little bit of what is called a vacuum. You kind of create a space in which that you're not talking, you're present, you're centered in yourself. You're looking at the person, maybe smiling, and you're just waiting for them to fill the gap. Maybe they are not as emotionally in control. Maybe they feel the awkwardness and then you get them to fill it. Now, what happens is that when they fill it, they are inevitably investing more in you, which is going to better off your friendship. If someone is investing in you, they're gonna be like, they're gonna rationalize and be like, I like this person. You know, we have common commonalities, we have similarities. They're gonna draw conclusions and gonna have confirmation bias of their own beliefs that I like this person. So they're gonna actually see the good qualities in you, not the bad qualities. And the next thing we're gonna actually break down exactly how we can cultivate that reality and that ecosystem to allow people to jump into it. So cultivating your own reality and your own ecosystem it's a little bit more than just your interactions with people it's more your actual lifestyle so let me give you an example so you got someone that's interacting with someone and they've got their beliefs running they've got their self-esteem they've got their self-confidence and they're interacting with someone all of that has been 
measured from their past experience. You know, hypothetically, they're in a situation where they, you know, say they do the 75 hard, right? And they challenge themselves and they actually complete it. Their confidence is going to be a little bit more deep rooted in themselves and more confident in them pushing through hard challenges, you know, emotions that don't want you to do the 75 hard, just pushing through the workouts where they feel sore. That's something in their life and their lifestyle that has actually made them more confident so that they can talk to someone, they can push through the emotions of, you know, going up to a stranger and saying hello, maybe the awkward moment where, you know, who plays for the bill, maybe the awkward moment of talking to someone they deem as high value, maybe asking that girl on the date, maybe asking that girl to be, you know, in a relationship with you. All of those challenges happen from outside influences, happen from lifestyle causes, happen from things that are not just you relating with other people. So what you want to do is actually have a look at your lifestyle. Have a look at where you are challenging yourself. Are you even challenging yourself? I challenge you that if I have a look at your life, I'm going to be finding where that you are choosing comfort over hard challenges. Typically we know that cold showers are great for us. Typically we know that meditation is amazing for us. All of these things we do, but yet we choose the comfortable route. Going home and working on ourselves and being developing our personality, developing our lifestyle, yet Call of Duty and Fortnite is just there and that's the comfortable route. That's the easy route. A lot of the time when you start to take the easy route, you start to align yourself with comfort. The more that you do that, the more, even though it feels great at the time, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna be the first person that it feels so good to be sleeping in. It feels so good that you don't wanna go out for the run. It feels amazing, it feels so much easier. But you'll notice that when people maybe win the lottery, when people maybe have everything given to them, they will find a way to make it hard for them. Hypothetically, I'll give an example. A celebrity, you know, a, a Disney star, I'm not gonna name names, but say a child actor or actress, right? They have everything given them. They've got the money, they've got the status, they've got the friends, they've got everything. Their life is perfect. Maybe they're a son or a daughter of a rock legend or anything like that. They have everything taken care of, money-wise, financial-wise, struggle-wise, anything like that. You will find these people will cause a controversy, will cause a situation in their life that they have to overcome. They wanna cause some drama, some chaos, some uncomfortableness. Their life has been too comfortable and they actually do it for themselves. So if you're constantly choosing the comfortable route, you're going to find yourself actually making life harder in certain ways that you don't expect. So instead of making ways that are unexpected, why don't you actually make the ways that you do know that are uncomfortable so you can be ready for these situations. And again, as I said, all of this lifestyle contributes to your self-esteem, contributes to your self-image of how you perceive yourself or your self-confidence. All of that is intertwined with each other. So the more that you are choosing those routes, the more that you are actually choosing things that scare you, you know, conquering those fears, choosing the uncomfortable route when you know it can be bettering you, you know that cold showers are great for you, but heck, I don't want to do them at the best of times, you don't want to do them at the best of times, but it's this art of actually doing things that we don't always like that creates this idea, creates this kind of environment in which we can succeed with things that happen in our life, maybe talking to someone, maybe overcoming the pressures and the social anxiety that we feel interacting with people. Maybe it's that girl you wanna go up and cold approach her and all your emotions are running. You don't know how to turn them off. You don't know how to conquer them. You don't know how to overcome them. Yet, is it a problem there? Or is it a problem with your whole life setup that has caused kind of things like this? This is the way in which you can create this ecosystem. If you're constantly doing fun things, constantly challenging yourself, constantly being your own cheerleader, constantly doing things that you're also inviting other people to do, and you're still doing them no matter what, if they come or not, you are subsequently actually cultivating your own ecosystem. You're cultivating this environment around you that is hypnotizing, that is very magnetic, that is very that has this gravitational pull that is gonna attract people inside of it. Whether it's high level people, whether it's girls, whether it's just people in general that are gonna to wanna to be doing the things that you're gonna be doing. Again, you just start to doing this, you start incorporating them into your life, you will find that they will start to incorporate you into their lives and what they're doing. It's kind of a give and take. And that's what happens in life. Same thing, as I said, it's always a balance. It's a balance between selfless and self and too much being selfish. It's a balance between comfort and being uncomfortable. It's a balance between being egotistical a little bit and being super non-ego. 
it's always a balance in life and you just have to find the synchronicities and the balance point sometimes you're going to be too heavy one way sometimes you're going to be too heavy the other way but when you start to cultivate that ecosystem start to cultivate your own reality this will show in your conversations you will be comfortable with that awkward space you will be comfortable allowing the other person to talk allowing the other person to dictate the conversation you will be at the cause of a lot of these situations even though you're completely relaxed in the conversation this is, happens because your whole life is set up your whole life is a giant kind of I say party but your whole life is something that you're actually working on you're proud of it so when you're proud of your own life you're talking to someone they might give you some shit they might give you a shit test they might not agree with something and that's okay you're not wanting that validation from them you're not seeking that you're not always going up to someone being like oh I want I wish this person would like me I hope they like me because a lot of the time there's a few layers behind you like oh do they fit well into my lifestyle do they actually you know are they a good fit in my social circle are they not a good fit so there's now layers to what you will allow so instead of becoming the seller in which you're selling yourself to people which happens at the start when you're a beginner you start to jump into other people's realities you become the seller after a while when you build that ecosystem you actually build maybe getting your finances down point getting your social circle on point getting yourself in a good financial situation living situation then you have the self-esteem to be like you know what I'm not going to allow everybody in my life but if you do that at the start you haven't built the fundamentals so you have to build the fundamentals in order to be when you get to that intermediate period you can incorporate these things and now you're going to get to that advanced level now you're going to be on those higher levels you actually yourself are leveling up your own status your own sort of beliefs your habits and everything like that and other people will start to notice so they're the things that you have to incorporate in order to evolve and kind of create this ecosystem and this environment around you so the last thing that you have to incorporate a lot of the time is your own beliefs you have to get out of the the mental masturbation of finding what other people are thinking what other people are saying you need to cultivate your own beliefs your own rituals your own habits and this is what I say a lot of people do they go into the self-development niche and they constantly trap themselves in what other people think what their mentors think and as well as that's amazing don't get me wrong that is fundamental you need to be improving but you also need to be finding yourself and find different habits and different beliefs that you have because again if you're always playing by other people's rules always playing by what other people think you're never drawing your own opinions your own conclusions and you're still investing into other people you're not investing in yourself it sounds very selfish it sounds a bit egotistical but I see a lot of people that are too much the opposite they're constantly worrying about what other people think they're constantly sort of just micromanaging what this person's doing what this person this person and this person instead of thinking about themselves when I got very very good very very quickly with RSD as you guys know a lot of the time I didn't know what anyone else was doing it was just me not in an ego way not in a selfish way but it was like what am I doing what are the things and the steps that are progressing my life I wasn't so much worried or investing in other people it was more just me like how am I making myself better how am I actually self-improving instead of just self-regulating and being the same loop over and over again how am I actually getting better so I was more worried about the intricacies and the little kind of nuances little small things that I could change in myself that were actually causing some results not just continuously doing the same thing worrying about what this person tried this worrying about this first person's doing try this even though that's great when you're doing mentors it might be in business finance and everything like that you still have to draw your own conclusions your own opinions your own results that you've found in your life because again even though what one thing might happen for someone else it might be exactly the same as you it might not and you have to test and find out what works for you what works for this person he create create an e-commerce store make millions of dollars might not work for you this guy make you know the Kid Leroy becomes a rapper doesn't mean that you can become a rapper sure it could also mean that you become a rapper but you have to find out yourself you can't just allow other people to tell you you can't always just invest into other people you have to kind of cultivate your own thing your own reality a lot of time people are attracted to other people because they have their own thing going on and they want to be part of it it's kind of why two individuals are connected with each other one person has this amazing thing going on this other person has this amazing thing going on and they kind of symbiosely connect with each other and uh, then they've got this amazing thing going on you don't want a relationship in which one person's got some cool stuff going on and you're constantly jumping in there you are a tangible asset you can be gone get rid of you are not connected you don't have your own thing going on and this is what happens with relationships you see one guy overly investing too much in a girl she dumps him and then his whole world is crushed that might have been you because I know from personal experience that was me 
So I was so overly invested into this girl that I had nothing else going on. And when you have nothing else going on, when uh, when uh, the kind of the final curtains are closed, I just had to reinvent myself, you know? So I was forced to do this. And I'm telling you because I don't want you to have to be forced to do this. You can do this from your own judgment where it's not causing pain and agony. So what I would get you to do, the actionable steps that I would get you to do is number one, have a look at where you are. Have a look at what made you get to where you are. Maybe you're beginning, maybe you're intermediate, maybe you're advanced, no matter where it is. Identify where you are. Identify what's got you to that stage. If you're a beginner, start to jump in other people's realities. Start to be proactive. Start to talk to every single person you can. Start to talk, you see that hot girl, you go approach her. You see that business person, you go approach him, ask for some business advice. You see that high value person, you go up and talk to them. That's what you need to do. Now the intermediate guys need to, what they need to do is now to step away from that paradigm a little bit and start to cultivate their own reality with the things that I talked about before which is cultivating your ecosystem your environment in which you're doing cool stuff you've got cool things going on and you're inviting people and you're doing it regardless or not they coming or not you're just doing it you're creating this environment in which you are the ultimate person you are actually bettering yourself you are actually doing self-improvement the guys that are ahead well you need to rinse and repeat rinse and repeat you need to fine tune this like a car you know fine tune it until you are so good at it if you can't do it in one location try another location one type of person another type of person if you're attracted to only one type of girl change the girls up try a different girl if you're only attracting one type of person in your life change things up try to attract different people try to use your hobbies to attract all these people that's what an advanced guy is doing you're doing this because if you do not you're going to stick at that intermediate purgatory you're going to stick at that plateau and you do not want to stick at the plateau. So hopefully this helps you, hopefully this wakes you up to be like, okay, well, what got me here won't get me there. I have to change things up. Even though you may have a down point, it's kind of like reaching the mountain. You see the mountain, you're like, oh, there's the top of the mountain. You know, that's at the start. You're doing and you, it's working, it's working, it's working. You're like, I'm almost at the top, I'm at the top. And then you see, as you look up, the real mountain. So you've got to go down for a bit because that's where the hollow is and then you get to the top of the mountain. It is a journey. Even if you think you already finished the journey and you have a look and you haven't got the results or success that you wanted to, it's about, okay, redesign everything, re-evolve like a, like a Pokemon and now attacked the final summit to the actual peak. So Sam here, hopefully enjoyed that and I will be seeing you soon.